animal rights. Animals have rights. They have rights because they were created by God. All animals are treated equally like a human. Animals are species like humans. They are just living their own, trying to survive in the world, and trying to live in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to talk about animal rights and how they are abused by people. So, animals have life and rights. No animal should be abused. Animals are like a human who eat, who sleep, and care for their babies. In our society today, animals are killed and sold at store, like meat and chicken. Some animals that have far are killed and sell their far to the market to make money. Research shows that every year, 39% of animals are abused and killed. These people keep abusing animals every year. All people and animals should live together in peace, so there will be no abusing of animals. A lot of people think that animals are just a thing to make money and food. People who think that they are just for money, food should be put in justice. Scientists use animals for experiment, which is dangerous because they'll hurt the animals or kill the animals. Lot of people are against this abuse, but some are not. Those people who are not against animal abuse are those who own company that make animal foods and stuff. People should not buy stuff that is made from animal because it abusing the animals. Philip Wallen, who is against the abuse of animals, said that animals should be off the menu because they are screaming in the terror, slaughterhouse, crates, and cage. He was a man who loves animals and who heard their crying voices. Animals in the sea are always killed. 90% of small fish are ground into pellets to feed livestock. Vegetarian like cows are now the world's largest ocean predator. The ocean is dying in our time. In the future, maybe there will be no fishes in the sea. 10,000 spaces are wiped out every year because of our actions. We are now facing 60th mass extension in cosmology history. It is crime to kill animals. The world has changed now. Animals' rights is now the greatest social justice issue since the abolition of slavery. Meat causes as a wide range of cancer and heart disease. Animals are not just other species. They are other nations. And we murder them at our peril. I believe that if we take off animals, take off Mino, all the abuse of animals will decrease to zero percent, and there will be peace in the world. Imagine the world that is peace. Humans and animals in one big family and help each other in problem. I know people can change their way in a better way.
Law. BPG to be. First, religion, human beings' relation to that which they regards as holy, sacred, absolute, spiritual, divine, or worthy of special reverence. But also, commonly regarded as consisting of the way people deal with ultimate concerns about their lives and their faith after death. There are many religions in the world, but this time, there's a religion that's different from Catholic, born again, Pentecostal, and any religions that we have in the Philippines. Using earrings and other accessories, and using makeup are prohibited in order for them to give value and respect to their God, which was the hero. Reaching the presence of their God, they speak different languages. It depends on how to talk. Accordingly, people's climbing in the four quarters of this church because of the spirit that lives in their lives. A silver necklace, platinum and specify them the, the different spirit that they have but uh, who are we to judge them who are we to judge them that that is their beliefs and their cultures we, we have different faith to praise our source we don't have the right to judge but they have the right to live and to respect their rights and that's all thank you Good day everyone, I'm Ronan Lee Kumabaga, second year 2B, informative speech. An episode of the Indie Humorous and Often Line Crossing Show, South Park had the four young men animated characters singing the song Pig and Elephant Danny, Just Want Splice. After a visit to the South Park Genetic Engineering Ranch, and unfortunately, this is how much of the country thinks about hybrid animals. When the most people hear the term hybrid animal, they often think of odd mutant creatures, hypopotamiosis mixed with lions, dogs mixed with cats or squirrels. Mixed with the porcupines, indeed the word hybrid invokes the imagination and encourages one to entertain these up. improbable combinations are miracles of science. However, the phrase hybrid animals merely means a crossbreeding of the two animals a process which has occurred for centuries both artificially and naturally. The idea of hybrid dates back to the mythology of ancient times. Folk tales were full of animal human hybrid stories like mermaids and minotaurs. The word hybrid comes from the ancient Greek meaning son of Otrigius Kandak, but understanding hybrid animals lies both in nature and science. Hybridation has been occurring in nature for thousands of years. Diaries of early hunters in the northwestern territories tell the shooting birds that we are large and off wild with hairy paws, suggesting hybrids of Kodiak and polar bears. Recent DNA studies confirm this is possible. Thank you for watching. Good day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I am from the Black B and I am GPV Factor. So, my title of my informative speech is all about the ocean is on fire. You might laugh and make it is as a joke, but a serious matter like this need to be broadcast and be informed to all. January 16, 2003, Australia ocean side is on fire. That made people that made people of Australia terrified is there something wrong in the ocean or fire breathing species or underneath. So people of Australia and the government keep on spraying it with nitrogen to penetrate the fire. 
But as long as there's so much heat by the sun, the fire is keep on growing. So, but what is really the reason behind the ocean fire? Is it really a fire breathing species or there's something scientific reason behind the phenomenon? So, according to Simon George, a professor of organic geochemistry at Macquarie University in Australia, the reason behind the fire is a gas leak of Pamit School Malub Zap Oil Development. So, the fire is caused by the too much methane leak and other wet gas components such as ethane, propane, um, etc. Igniting the ocean and heat from the sun resulting to a massive ocean fire. So that is my informative speech it's about the sea is on fire. Our beloved teacher, Mr. Francis Nudado, my dear classmates, friends, and schoolmates, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Smoking is regarded as a passion symbol in a young boys. Despite the effects of smoking, people stay continue to smoke. Many young boys who start smoking feel that they look broad-minded and liberated if they smoke. Most often, the teenagers adopt this habit to just because of the company they enjoy. Sometimes, they take a pull from their friend's cigar. Later on, they develop the habit to turn into a thin smoke. It must be kept in mind that smoke is a toxic habit that may develop lung cancer. Moreover, the other toxic chemicals like a arsenic, carbon monoxide, methane, and acetic acid, nicotine, butane, and cadmium. Present in cigarettes are also highly damaging for health. Currently, cigarette manufacturing companies are doing very well all over the globe. Such manufacturing companies also describe warnings on the part Packets of cigarettes still people do not pay anything. On the other hand, every year government increase the own smoking and probe to be slaves of this bad habit. The active smokers also harm other people around them. Though as a passive smokers, here is significant on the part of the government to keep a ban on advertisement that allow people to smoke. Moreover, the family members and close friends of the smoker should also play their part to aware the smoker about bad effects of this habit. Although it requires strong will to stop smoking, but once you plan to give up, you can definitely do. And once again, Good day to all. This is my informative speech about why money rules the world and what impact of ignorance in ourselves. Good day. Money drives passion probably went over your head. But here's the thing. The most common saying that everybody said, money rules the world. But have you ever thought what is the reason behind this saying? It is true that without money, we can't live our life peacefully. But I have met personally with some people who think that money is not all the thing in life. Money rules the world because a man who is a billionaire and is respected and loved by everyone. But why? Because he has a superpower to control everything from money, whether a person or a thing. We can't even think a man who has no money in his pocket can easily rule the world. That's the reason on the world is only ruling by those who have money to do all the things that they want, which is all the darker side of our lives. Nowadays, people set aside love, self-respect, and affection, and they are not playing a dominant part in our lives, but their values are still remaining. 
It is the money that makes the relationship stronger. But how far we go? We should always keep in our mind that you cannot buy a true relationship from one another with money. So what should we get from this? Money and relation both go side by side. Loss of money never ends. That's the reality. In the ignorance of ourselves, most of the people, including me, serve our lives to double our money. But never think about our health. We never give a single thought that if our money gets lost, it will surely take some time to recover back. But have we think about our health? When it will be lost, are we able to regain it? No, we cannot be the same. This is what we should consider before including ourselves in the money-making race. And that's all. Thank you. one and all present here, I am Jean Karin Humawan, BPID 2B, and I am standing before you all to share my thoughts through my speech about life. Life is a continuous ongoing process that has to end someday. Life is all about adoring yourself, creating yourself. A quote for you that life can be only understood backward, but it must be lived forwards. Life itself is a meaningful life and support others to do so. It doesn't matter how many years you live, but it matters how will you live a quality life. The fear of death always threatens our lives. Every person has to face death sooner or later. But that doesn't mean that it should discourage us from living life to the fullest or achieving our goals. A person is wise only when he or she is already to meet destiny when it comes but until the time enjoys every bit of it. It is a sense of readiness. It is a journey in everyone's life wherein we have to cross the bridge of the death to be able to wake up to a life eternal. Human life is truly a very precious gift. Each moment of human life carries us an opportunity to act, to develop, and express our virtues. Every moment unlocks the path to us to receive blessings. This is the fruit that life gives us both positive and negative situations. What is really important is how we react. Life is the gift of God in the form of trust that we will make it meaningful in whatever we can. We're all unique individuals. No one is born like you and no one will ever, ever be. So cherish your individuality. Life is a journey, not a destination. Life is nothing but a journey with lessons, hardships, heartache, and special moments. It will ultimately lead us to our destination, our purpose in life. The road will not always be a plain. In fact, throughout our travels, we will face many challenges. These challenges will always taste our courage, strength, weaknesses and faith along our way we may encounter obstacles that will come between the paths and we are destined to take lastly i will conclude that we should make life worthwhile it should be with the love of our family and friends that life can be made beautiful life can be more beautiful and purposeful by discharging our duties in our family at work society and the world at large Good morning everyone, my name is Aisha Joy Pihamon from bpid 2 b So for today's video, I will make a midterm exam informative speech entitled with Fear of Unknown. Fear of Unknown Fear of the unknown is tendency to be afraid when you have no information or any level about something you face. It can escalate into intolerance of uncertainty. Everyone of conscious of mind fear of something. Those certain individuals who say fearless are liars. Anyone and everyone who are fearless may not be scared of physical being but are scared sometimes terrified by the unknown. The unknown can take the form of anyone, anytime or any place. That feeling you get makes you uncertain about your future is fear. 
Fear can be disguised as many other emotions, such as anxiety or anxiousness. Butterflies do not exist. They are really the fear of not knowing how the immediate upcoming events will turn out or affect you and everyone close to you. The unknown can never cease to exist. It is always there, is the back of your mind. Watching, learning, waiting for the perfect time to manifest into a new, into a new more drastic phobia. Making you ask yourself questions like, what will the next? Or how will I die? To explain the unknown is the simplest way for me possible. Imagine your, yourself staring into a hole in the earth that you are unsure how you know but know that is a small step no matter how hard you strain your eyes you will never truly understand what could lurking inside what is at the bottom if there is a bottom or what could be stirring you right in the fact on the other side to the thick of well of darkness lastly to manage your fear you can identify areas with your control Make a step-by-step -step plan. Practice mindfulness to ground yourself in the present. Or talk someone you trust. For a healthy lifestyle can give you the strength and clarity of mind necessary to thrive in the midst of understanding. Good morning everyone. My name is Jason Belcares. My informative speech is all about smoking. Smoking is regarded as a fashion symbol in young people. Despite the effects of smoking, people still continue to buy and smoke. Many young boys who start smoking feel like they look cool when they smoke. Most often, the teenagers adopt this bad habit just because of the company they enjoy. Sometimes, they take a pack of their friends to smoke. Later on, they develop the habit of smoking as an indispensable part of their lives. Day by day, the followers of this bad habit turn into a chain smokers. It must be kept in mind that smoking is a toxic habit that may develop a lung cancer. Moreover, the other toxic chemicals like arsenic, carbon monoxide, methane, acetic acid, and many more are highly damaging for health. Currently, cigarette manufacturing companies are doing very well all over the globe, such such. Manufacturing companies also inscribe warnings on the packets of cigarettes, but still, people do not pay ahead. On the other hand, every year, government increases the price of cigarettes to discourage people using tobacco. Yet, smokers go on smoking and prove to be slaves of this bad habit. The act this bad habit. The active smokers also harm other people around them, known as a passive smokers. Here, it is a significant on the part of the government to keep a ban on advertisement that other people to smoke. Moreover, the family members and close friends of the smoker should also pay their part to aware the smoker about the bad effects of this habit. Although it requires strong will to stop smoking, but once you plan to give up, you can definitely. That's all. Thank you. My name is Angeline Mariano and my topic is about Indonesian beliefs and cultures. So despite of being secular country by law, Indonesia is well known for its massive Muslim populations, which also the world's largest Muslim populations. However, Islam is only one of the six legally recognized religions in the country, along with Buddhism, Catholicism, Confucianism, Hinduism, and Protestantism. In Indonesian's cultures and values, stresses that people are socially responsible for their families and elders. For example, they have to work away from home to provide their financial assistance or give up their licensure's time to raise their siblings. And the uniqueness of Indonesian's culture is formed by the indigenous people as well as influences from China, India, Europe, Middle East, it varies from a traditional contemporary religions also impacted cultural assimilations, creating the most diverse society in the world. 
Did you know that Indonesia is known for biodiversity as well as cultural diversity? Five facts about Indonesia. First, Indonesia is a home of over 100 endangered animals. Second, Indonesia has the world's biggest young populations. Third, uh, the world's biggest flower lives in Indonesia. Fourth, home of over 700 different languages and dialects. Five, Indonesia is the most hottest spot in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Hi everyone, by the way, my name is Christine Gerardi Prado, and this is my informative speech. So, have you ever heard about the horse as the niciest meat? Well, if you don't, allow me to share my research. This is so interesting, so you must listen. Eating horse meat in Japan started to become more common in the early 1920s as farmers would sell animals that could no longer work for meat. Hmm. Eventually, they discovered that the horse meat was rich in protein. Japanese horse meat is considered healthy for being low in fat, high in protein, and also iron. Proud locals of Nagano even attribute their health and longevity to healthy horse meat. So if you're going to ask me how to eat a horse meat in Japan, I would literally say that the best way to eat a horse meat in Japan is raw. The sakura shanichi or basashi is cut tiny and deep in soy sauce and grated ginger, daikon, or garlic as you prefer. They said that the texture, depending on the cut, is firm and it's probably best described as clean, fresh taste. Japan is gaining popularity even among the ladies as a beauty food. Horse meat is very versatile and can be prepared in variety of ways. So what are you waiting for? If you're going to visit Japan, don't hesitate to eat this one. Bye-bye! Good day, people, and to me as well. This day, we're going to discover an interesting and bizarre tradition in the world that could leave your mouth open like... Uh, oh, no! Whatever. So here I go. We all know that coconut is a little bit heavy to carry and so hard to open. That's why we need a tool to open it. But in India, opening the coconut is quite unusual and lots of pain. Why? Because opening the coconut is by smashing it to a person's head. Ouch, that is definitely painful. This practice causes head injuries, of course. Some of them rush to the doctor's clinic to get first aid treatment. I'd love to ask them this. Which one get open? Is it the coconut or is it the head? Smashing coconut is done not in the use of cooking or something, but it is a ritualistic practice to the devotees as a part of a Aidi Piroko celebration. Smashing coconut on a devotee's head is symbolic of breaking free from your past and surrendering yourself to God. It is a voluntary decision on the part of devotees to go through this ordeal. Yet, thousands of people lined up outside the gate of Mahalakshmi Temple in Karur Tamil Nadu for this. Despite of the pain, wounds, and injuries caused by this practice, the devotees still receives their blessings spiritually. So will I suggest you to do this coconut smashing in your head to receive blessings too? No, maybe not because I'm afraid you can't survive. So that's it guys in this narrative and I hope you guys learn so much from this. And I am Halbert P. Dumanan. Thank you for watching and good day. A pleasant day everyone. I am Chris Malnis. I am here to present my speech. It's about freedom under fascism. 
concept of liberty like concept of morality are not fixed and permanent they are changeable they are not absolute but relative complete liberty may be well defined as anarchy complete liber liberty would simply lead to phenomena of this description if i did not care for the personality of any person in the audience i should be at liberty to shoot that person that is what liberty amounts to as a philosophical concept all liberty is relatives it is based upon the system of checks and balances exerted by the state upon the individual the struggle for rank and privilege is invariably between the individual and the state and it is most interesting to note that under any form of government whatsoever fascist, communist, or democratic, it is invariably the state that holds the whip under over the individual. If I go driving down Broad Street at a speed exceeding that permitted by the traffic regulations, I representative to the state will stop me. He will direct me to appear at the certain place at a certain time. If I fail to obey, some rather unpleasant things are likely to happen to me. I might say that my liberty is terribly by being infringed upon, and I should be telling the truth. Changing concepts of liberty. Our very concepts of liberty changes as time goes on. The concepts of liberty prevailing in the medieval republics of Venice and Florence was quite different from the concepts and that has been brought out by the preceding speaker. In those republics, we had an oligarchy on the one hand and a plotocary on the other, both exerting retrains over the mass of the population. May I point out that liberty is that time even compatible with slavery? Ancient Rome enjoyed liberty. In the United States, prior to the Civil War, we enjoyed liberty. We had the Constitution. We had slaves slaves for whom that constitution and that bill of rights did not exert even at the present time our concepts of liberty is definitely changing the idea of raj individualism the idea that prevailed during the last century of the individual starving for himself alone often inferring upon the rights of his fellow men and being protected by the state in that constant infringement is no longer look upon the approval we have the, today in the United States the New Deal and the NRA, which are forms of restriction upon liberty. Liberty is one definition is the right to life and the pursuit of happiness. People are saying there shouldn't be discrimination against people whether they are black or white. Black Lives Matter is an international human rights for killing black people, African and American, by the police. It was formed on July 13, 2013. It was popular in total world, mainly in the United States of America. The founders of the Black Lives Matter are Alicia Gonza, Opal Tometo, and Patrice Pillars. Way back 2013, we heard a death of a black American man in America. And also we know recently, there's a continuous protest against this matter in America by the Americans. People of our countries and the states of America are having full day protests by both white and black men. So they're trying to make the people show that they're united. But due to some misbehaving of some people, they lost lives and some of the people got continuous discrimination. It's nothing like white people are great or black people are great. We must understand one thing. The person who respects and the respect to the humanity is really great if it is understood by the people who think themselves great and bigger than others. In future, we can try to, to um, stop such kind of loss of lives. The protest of Black Lives Matter is one of the biggest matter happening and also in the future. Let us hope and wish there shouldn't be any discrimination against black people and also treat everyone equally. For me, it's right that we fight for the lives of the black people and also their right because they're still human. And the only thing that 
keeping us apart, our over way of thinking, and our skin color. But we all are still human and have feelings. After all, we are living in one society, breathing the same air. And we should live with our color is not a boundary, where equality is in the center and discrimination shouldn't be tolerated. Good day. I am Mary Grace Torabalaod, and for today, I am going to discuss where my topic is all about the full-blown pacifism is rarely naive and realistic. Pacifism rarely gets taken seriously due to the widespread of cultural bias. Everybody knows that pacifism is hopelessly naive and idealistic. Meanwhile, war is accepted as normal, practical, and realistic. And although prophets such as Mohandas Gantai and Martin Luther King Jr. are expected for their moral strength, they are often dismissed by the dominant culture as unrealistic. However, when Warism taking war for granted as morally acceptable becomes recognized to be like racism and sexism. A prejudice that distorts our better judgment. Then we can try to set the bias aside and openly consider varieties of pacifism. Pacifism means peace-loving. It should not be mistaken for pacifism, which means being passive, suffering acceptance, not resisting evil. Because the two words sound alike, people occasionally confuse one more offend or from the other. In fact, pacifists rarely are the pacifists, more often they are activists working for peace. Pacifism takes many forms of all of them, opposing war and other forms of violence. Beyond this negative position of being anti-war, war, pacifism involves various positive strategies for making peace. So. Uh, there are two sides pacifism, the negative, anti-war, anti-violence side, and the positive offering peaceful, non-violent alternative side. So, let's begin with anti-war pacifism. So, thank you everyone. Good. Racism is the process by which systems and policies, actions, and attitudes create inequitable opportunities and outcomes for people based on race. Racism is more than just prejudice in thought or action. It occurs when this prejudice, whether individual or institutional, is accompanied by the power to discriminate against oppress or limit the right of others. Speaking up on racism, right now there is a pain deeply edged in the soul of our nation and the hearts of millions. To stand together, we must stand up for one another and recognize the fear, heart, and outrage rightly provoked by the senseless killing of George Floyd and a much longer history of racism. That painful past is still present today, not only in the, in the form of violence, but in the everyday experience of deeply rooted discrimination. We see it in our criminal justice system, in the disproportionate toll of disease on black and brown communities, in the inequalities in neighborhood, services, in the actions our children receive. 
I have heard from so many that you feel afraid. Afraid in your communities, afraid in your daily lives, and most cruelly of all, afraid in your own skin. We can have no society worth celebrating unless we can guarantee freedom from fear for every person who give this country their love, labor, and life. To create change, we have to re-examine our own views and actions in light of a pain that is deeply felt but to often ignored. Issues of human dignity will not abide standing on the sidelines. To the black community, we see you. You matter and your lives matter. This is a moment when many people may want nothing more than a return to normalcy or to, or to a status quo that is only comfortable if we avert our gaze from injustice. As difficult as it may be to admit that desire itself a sign of privilege, George Floyd's death is shocking and tragic proof that we must aim from far higher than a normal future in a build one that leads up to the highest ideals of equality and justice. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., every society has its protectors of status quo. It is fraternities of the indifferent who are notorious for sleeping through revolutions. Today, our very survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, to remain vigilant and to face the challenge of change. With every breath we take, we must commit to being that change and to creating a better, more just world for everyone. This is my informative speech about Kalash people, Pakistan. As has been mentioned earlier, the Kalash are an insulated South Asian population of Indo-European speakers residing in the Hindu Kush mountain valleys in the northwestern part of Pakistan. Near the Afghanistan border, they represent a religious minority with unique and rich cultural traditions. For centuries, the Kalash live in a remote mountainous region, which now spreads contiguously across Afghanistan and Pakistan. According to reports, the people who resided in the area now under Afghanistan were converted to Islam by political design and their land renamed as Nuristan. The Kalash are considered to be an indigenous people of Asia. With their ancestors migrating to Chitral Valley from another location, possibly further south, the Kalash people are the last of the surviving indigenous communities of the Hindu Kush. They are the remnants of, of what was once a unique region. Kalash people have a special a culture which is neither Greek nor local. They develop their own culture seed, the educationist, the Kalash celebrate three festivals in a year which have become a tourist attraction in the region. During the festivals, the Kalash drink homemade wine and dance to the sound of drums activities that are strictly forbidden to Muslims. Also, unlike Muslim women, Kalash women are not only allowed to choose their own husband, but they can also divorce them and are even allowed to elope, Kalash thrive and tradition in danger of extension yet despite all the differences with their Muslim neighbors. The Kalash are the danger of being observed by them. Their traditions are quickly becoming extinct as many convert to Islam. Thank you for watching and bye! Today, at this moment, we're going to tackle about strangest foods eaten in Africa. In Africa, 
people had filled mice in cornfields for food. They put the mice on sticks, cook and dry the mice is popular delicacy for sale in markets and road stools. In Africa, mice cook and fill then serve with ugali, locally known as saja pop and ishimola. The second is mopain power. Second is mopain worms. Considered a through the legacy, the mopain worm is widely consumed in rural areas of southern Africa. Being highly nutritious makes an important certain of protein for a lot of households in these areas. Scientifically, known as the Combertius melina, the mopain worm is in fact a brightly colored spiky caterpillar of emperor moth. They are one of the larger caterpillars, nearly as long as a fingers and as thick as cigar. For the majority, of the people in the Western world, eating insects or eating bugs is welcome it with feelings of aversions and disgust. Yet for a lot of people in Kofurgapi, are the consumptions of edible insects and bugs is part for their diet. Horse and donkey meat is normally eaten in rural areas of illegal, sold in reputable butcheries. Sitswana speaking, People have been eating donkey meat since times of immemorial. And also snakes! Oh, Snake meat is delicacy among some tribes in Nigeria. Many snakes are edible if prepared properly. Some too are poisonous to consume. While some people are scared of snakes, people who love kind of meat hunt them and you can see snakes for sale in certain parts of Nigeria. Cats are also eaten by some tribes in Nigeria, but well, that's a story for another day. Thank you for watching. Greetings to you, Sir Francis Nudalo. By the way, I'm Fanny Jane Ornelio Bukia from BPN 2B. Today, I will present an informative speech entitled, What Causes Sleepwalking? Sleepwalking refers to the act of walking or performing complex motor actions while asleep. Generally, sleepwalking occurs during the non-rapid eye movement stage of sleep. We get the most NREM sleep in the first few hours after falling asleep, so sleepwalking occurs mo most often during this period. A sleepwalking event may last anywhere from several minutes to an hour. Adults are less likely to experience sleepwalking since the events usually decrease or stop altogether once poverty hits. However, is it possible to continue sleepwalking beyond poverty or experience a sleepwalking event for the first time in adulthood? Many factors may influence sleepwalking. Researchers have investigated numerous possible causes for sleepwalking. According to a sleepwalking study conducted with twins, there appears to be a significant genetic influence in sleepwalking for children and adults. Additionally, children are more likely to sleepwalk if one or both of their parents have a history of sleepwalking. Sleep terrors evolve feelings of panic and distress during sleep. People experience a sleep terror, often scream, cry, or kick in their sleep until the terror passes. Stress affects the body and mind in many ways. Stressful events such as family conflict, loss, work-related issues, or even changes to a sleep environment can trigger sleepwalking. While stress has been shown as a present factor in those experiencing sleepwalking, it is not necessarily the sole because of sleepwalking. Many people still a relatively uncommon occurrence. It is important to provide an environment that is safe for sleepwalker. While it may be difficult to awake a sleepwalker, it is not seen as dangerous. Still, the focus should be on presenting harm rather than stopping the behavior. Sleepwalking is re relatively harmless in many cases. Coconut is so popular all over the world. It tastes yummy, somewhat nutty, and slightly sweet. 
there's a lot of benefits that we can get in coconut. But coconut also is dangerous. Failing coconut kills 150 people all over the world every year. Coconuts failing from trees and striking individuals can cause serious injury in the head, the back, the neck, the shoulder, and are occasionally fatal. That's how dangerous when failing coconuts hits our head. But don't you know, in India, they break coconut into someone's head as a divine process? Breaking coconuts on the devotee's head is symbolic of breaking free from your past and surrendering yourself to God. Isn't it strange, right? During the ritual, one of the priests hold the head of the devotees who are sitting in a queue waiting their turn and another priest break open the coconut in a jiffy by smashing it on the skull of a person. That is harmful, right? This ritual causes head injuries to the people. Some of them rush to the doctor's clinic to get first aid treatment, which could involve a few stitches. However, helpers deployed in the temple premises to apply turmeric powder or sacred ash on the injury of the people. But why did these people in India did this kind of ritual? One of the old tales associated with this temple state that once upon a time when the devotees prayed to the Lord Shiva, the Lord Shiva in the Shaivite tradition, Shiva is the supreme Lord who creates protects and transform the universe. That's what they believed in. When the devotees prayed to Lord Shiva, the Rydate wielding deity refused to turn go. Noting that the coconut has three eyes, they started breaking coconut to please him. Finally, Shiva appeared before the devotees and fulfilled their wishes. As we can see, our culture and their culture are totally different. But that's their faith and this is our faith. We can't judge people by their faith and people can't judge us by our faith. We have a right to choose whom to believe on. We have different culture and beliefs in life. But the thing is, we must know how to respect others on what they believe on. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Samar Rukian, and today I'm going to deliver the informative speech about hijab. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In the world we live today, Muslims are being watched through a very negative eyes. The common misconception is we are a terrorist who are obsessed with an idea of killing innocent people in the name of our God. Muslim men are accused of oppressing their wives, of forcing them to fully cover up and wear a hijab in public. The sight of fully dressed women wearing heat scarves does not add to the positive image of Islam in the West. There are many reasons why people think we as a Muslim woman wearing the scarf. Some believe that we are oppressed uneducated or terrorist. However, all of this conception of hijab are false and greatly misleading. First of all, what is hijab? Hijab is a supply of piece of cloth which cover the woman's hair, neck, and bloodstone. Literary, hijab means veil, which is a barrier. In a sense, our hijab is a barrier between us and the public eyes. It is meant to protect us from the danger of society. The command for hijab is addressed in Surah Nur of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O Muhammad, to the believing men that they should lower their guests and guard their modesty that is more pure.
and Allah is well acquainted with all that they do. And say, O Muhammad, to the believing women that they should lower their guests and guard their modesty, and they should not display their beauty and ornaments except what most ordinary appears thereof. And let them not stamp their feet to make known what they counsel of their and turn to Allah in a repentance, all of you, O believers, that you might succeed. Girls and boys in all ages should make here an amazing belief culture about globalization of magic, Western concept of magic, religion, and science was imported to other parts of the globe. In a modern period, trades, conqueror, missionaries, and anthropologists, and historian European travels in the 16th and 19th centuries functioned as a primitive anthropographers whose written observations are invaluable historical resource. However, their accounts often colored by Judeo Christian. Assumption about religion versus magic illuminate. How indigenous people were trained as children to be educated or in the case of some conquerors as subhuman race to be enslaved during the later part of the 19th century. Anthropologists during the, the later part of the 19th century began to analyze magic and its part in the evaluation of the world and religion. Their work has characterized with a fundamental disruption rooted in the magic. Religion, science, evaluation model of the world is divided between historical, literate, urbanized, and culture for civilization, for example, the Asian tradition in East and South Asia, a non-literal tribal archaic or primitive societies such as those fundamental in part. View complex societies characterized by urbanization, centralization, and written traditional as more. Advanced and measured with their progress to the civilization according to the evolutionary model. Non moderate tribal, agricultural, or non urbanized practiced by early European observation as development. Trailing stage stagnant people with history and wild acceptance. There are residual effects still felt in a way of much. Religion, science are captured, and anthropologists are religion traditional. Distinguish between the religion practiced by the world, main faith, which often organize, organize magic as a superstition, and the belief of small, non literate societies which magic may in fact uncenter. To religious belief, there are distinguish between religion and magic. The site is a evaluator. Culture and appreciation. Imagine this scenario. Your family comes from a Native American background and is very connected to the cultural beliefs and religion of this community. One of the main tradition symbols in your culture is wearing a feathered war bonnet or more commonly known as a Native American headdress. When it is worn, it represents something of image significance to the Native that fought in the war and died for the peace and justice they deserve. They died in sacrifice of their community, their families, friends and loved ones how would you feel if you one day you walk into school and saw that a few of your classmates who are not native american wearing a replica of this exact war bonnet for me it would be hurtful and inappropriation and embarrassing good morning friends students and classmates my name is Juniza and today I will be informing you a real issue we have in our society that I believe it is something extremely important. As a good person, always try your best to be respectful and considerate of others. Don't be afraid to learn a few things along the way. 
and listen to other people's thoughts before you speak your own. So thank you everyone for listening my speech and I hope you learn something about cultural appropriation and its true effective on our society. Hello everyone, my name is Ria Jean Takan. And for my informative speech today, I'll be informing you all about why foot binding is practiced in China, who it attracts and how it was completed. Is beauty really worth all the pain that comes with long in? Well, most people today, even centuries ago, feel as though beauty is essential. According to Julie Wise, she defined that foot binding is reconstructing of the feet by breaking the arch of the toes. Of course, smaller toes on each foot. The objective of foot binding was to make women fit small, and only they would achieve the scar is by physically breaking the bones of their feet. And the reason why I choose this topic, because I think it was really important for people to be aware the cultural differences in this day and time especially due to stereotypical behaviors and misunderstanding. Why would women ever want to break the bones of their feet for each pair three inches long? Well, foot binding was a practice for purpose of having a prestigious status in society, being luxurious and of course look more attractive to men. One of the main reasons why foot binding was continually practiced was because it was a status symbol. The only way for a woman to marry into a man, men in China during this time would not even think to marry a woman who did not bind their feet. Foot binding survivor Lu Weasley states that as many as 2 billion Chinese women broke and bound their feet. During such pain for a woman was a nightmare, but for men it was a rousing pleasure. Mark Cartwright from the World History Encyclopedia even say as early between the age of 5 and 8 when the most of girls in Qing Dynasty in China would have their feet bended. From being prestigious status of a luxury and even a form of pornography, foot binding was primarily practiced among the women in China from 1960 BC until the 20th century. Some still continue to behold their feet. In secret, beauty may not be a complete reason and behind the originating of foot binding, but it most definitely played a signature role. The description of beauty during this time period was to have many three inches long feet that could fit into a lotus slipper. Unwilling to go through the pleasure and consequence involved women had no choice but to practice this in homemade costume known as foot binding. Today, many women practice similar costume by wearing a stylish five inches heels ladies. Ladies, we aren't stopping this trend anytime soon, correct? I guess the praise will always turn to be true. Beauty is pain. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Good day everyone. I'm Jolie Tardo from BTED TV. The pros and cons of being dead. When Jesus speaks about death and life, he is speaking about something in which all of us are involved. Nobody can see this. This isn't relevant to me. Life and death are the experience of every person in every generation in every culture. What is death? When you know what death is, then you will know what life is. We normally think about death as something that is pronounced by a doctor when the vital signs of life have ceased, when the heart no longer beats, the lungs no longer breathe, and the brain no longer sends it unmeeting signals throughout the body. Then a person is pronounced dead. Now let's start the proof of being dead. Do you stop you probably planned and experiencing before you knew when it was going to be cut short? Number two, make amends wherever you feel the need to. Relationships that aren't at the point, wherever you want to leave it, whether just be with friends, family, and relatives. Number three, prepare yourself mentally for your final moment, accepting time you have and the moment of finality. Number four, Give others the chance to mentally prefer themselves. Then we proceed to cons of being dead. Number one, the anxiety that is attached with knowing the exact time you're left with. It's human nature to worry how and it can avert it and in what way. Number two, 
mental stress of accepting the finality of the situation to come. Number three, while coming to terms with the present, you're going to be realizing your past decision and moments that define them. That is inseparable part of life. If we are to live life honestly and without fear, we have to also accept that death is ultimately inevitable death should not cause us to live fear, but rather to live our lives in the very best way that we can. It is important to not bury our head in the sun and instead to make responsible preparations including financial and legal arrangements as well as talking about our wishes with our family and friends. Every one of us is going to die someday, so there is no use in being afraid of death. You then feel miserable at the prospect of losing consciousness of your body in sleep. You accept sleep as a state of freedom to look forward to. So, is that it is a state of rest, of pension from this life. There is nothing to fear. When death comes, laugh at it. Death is only an experiencing through which you are meant to learn a great lesson. You cannot die. Good day everyone. This is Liza K. Fertes and I'm going to share with you about the beauty and bravery of a woman. Here in the Philippines, we see the beauty of a woman by wearing makeup, by wearing uh, accessories in our body, and wearing some dresses. But in other places, like Myanmar, they see a beauty of a girl by wearing neck ring and neck. They also believe that by wearing this is a symbolize of the dig dignity of the high rank while also protective powers. They begin to use this in the age of five years old. They also believe that by wearing this can avoid of the bite of a tiger. Did you know that the women of the Tadan tribe in Myanmar in the northern Thailand that have a record of the longest neck on all over the world? That country had a famous island and a maiden street foods also features women who bind their neck, makes them a girl. And did you know that by wearing neck ring in their neck can affect their health? Thank you everyone for listening my speech and I hope you learned something about the beliefs and culture of one of the culture of Myanmar. And see you again. Thank you. Hi, my informative speech is all about how music affects us. Did you know that music is one of the few activities that utilize the whole brain? Did you know that music can physically alter your brain structure? Today, I'm going to be talking about the power of music and, and its impacts and effects on the brain. Throughout my whole life, I have always had a passion for music of all different types and genres. I listen to music wherever I go and during whatever I'm doing. My mom would continually bother me about the music I was listening to and how it was corrupting my brain. After much research and many songs later, I discovered how it actually has a many positive effects in a brain. According to the New York Times, many people use music to make a repetitive job for more interesting or energetic. Some of the more melodious music out there can help release much higher amounts of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that helps control the brain's reward and pleasure centers. By rewarding the mind, we allow our mind to be happy, which increases our focus and keeps us in the present. Many different songs have the power of benefiting us, such as songs we enjoy and even music without lyrics. Songs that we enjoy make us feel better and like mentioned before, when we feel good, we have more of. That is need to finish our work more efficiently. Music can create image in our head. It's also a way to express your feelings and emotions. 
It's a way to escape from the pain in life. Music can stimulate us both physically and psychological studies tell us that this ability to change our state is one of the main reasons why people choose to listen to music. Music makes you smarter, according to contribute writer for Wake Up World, Jane Alban. How music benefits the brain claims the people that play and listen to a lot of music tend to have a larger corpus callosum. It is the group of nerve fibers that let us the two hemispheres of the brain communicate with each other, making problem solving easier. Music can repair brain damage caused by the stroke and other brain injuries. According to writer for Prop Anthony Torado, in ways music affects the body damage patients who lost partial ability to see or speak, so improvement may be included with singing or listening to music. Hi, my name is Virgin Joyce Sarsaleo Lumilis and my topic is all about human cannibalism. We all must eat to survive. However, since becoming a vegetarian, I have heard some people's justifications for eating meat. The most common excuse, an animal taste coupled with its diminished cognitive capacity justifies our consumption of it. In other words, Animals are stupid and they taste so good. So many of them they ate animals. What if the flesh of human tasted so good? Would there be any justification in killing someone? Most people have been brought up eating meat because their culture accepts it. In the island of Carib people of Lesser Antilles, cannibalism was practiced in New Guinea and in some parts of Solomon Island. Cannibalism has been documented in much of the world, including Fiji. Fiji, even once known as the Cannibal Isles in some societies, cannibalism is actually considered a cultural norm. It is believed that eating a person, flesh, or internal organs will endow the cannibal with some characteristics of the disease. The Carib are well known for the practice of cannibalism among humans. This practice has been attributed to people in the past all over the world. Why are people who eat flesh of man, human, not charged as a crime? In a, in the US or United States, there are no laws against cannibalism, but most, if not all, states have enacted laws that indirectly make it possible to legally obtain consume the body matter. Some of the theories there is a criminal happen unless you are authorized by a relevant person or institution. In addition, the desecration of mutilation of corpse is a criminal act in the means of acquiring any body parts of. Of course, also be a criminal. In other words, if someone killed a person to eat his flesh, he may be charged with murder and discretion of corpse. If he stole the body parts and eat it, he or she may be charged with thief. Human cannibalism is the act of practices of human eating the flesh of or internal organs or organs of other human beings. Cannibalism is consuming another individual of the same species as would it might be cured because food shortage and a curiosity. I am Star Talibas. So today I am I have some excitement that I can share to all of you. Mm, did you know that the country of Vietnam they give a formal funeral for the wheel? Oh that's so excitement. Giant's wheel funeral draws hundreds in central in Vietnam as sacred animals. Wheels and sunfish are often given proper burials by the local fishermen. Wheels and ocean sunfish are considered sacred animal by Vietnamese fishermen. It is a common belief among fishermen that by giving dead whales proper burials, so sailors will be blessed with luck, good weather, bountiful, bountiful catches, and protection while at sea. 
hundreds of locals in the central province of Guangnai gathered at a funeral on Tuesday held for a giant whale that was found floating in the yard of the coast. The ceremony for the 700 kilogram per meter 13, 13 feet whale was held in Bin Son district. People said they had tried to return the stricken whale to the sea but the giant mammal had grown weaker and died. According to local customs, customs three years after the burial, a shrine for the will will be effect, erected in a temple for worshippers to pay tribute to the giant ocean beast. Oh, so, so that's the new. So that's that's I can show you all, guys. Bye.